Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special and exclusive interview with His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Zimbabwe that is being held on the sidelines of the Third Africa Arab Summit right here in the state of Kuwait. First of all, may we welcome you uh, to Kuwait and also thank you for participating in the Third Africa Arab Summit. Uh, can we start by asking you, how do you evaluate the overall preparations that have been undertaken by the Kuwaiti government to ensure that the uh, summit is run smoothly and efficiently? Well, first of all, on behalf of our delegation, but I think I can also speak on behalf of the other delegations because this is something that has been shared among the delegations, that the amount of effort that the state of Kuwait has put in preparing for this summit has been absolutely outstanding, uh, both in terms of the preparations which were done uh, in collaboration with the two secretariats of the African Union, as well as the League of Arab States, uh, and the co-chair you know, of the African Union. The preparations were excellent. And of course, the manner that the delegations were received. First of all, at the ministerial level, we were received very, very warmly indeed. When our heads of state and government arrived, they were received very, very warmly indeed by the Amir himself, which was something which was very significant and very, very touching indeed uh, on part of our of our delegation. And then the facilities which were put in place for the summit were excellent. Uh, the quality of the discussions was very, very, very good indeed. So, you know, we are very, very impressed uh, by the manner that the state of Kuwait has prepared for this summit, they've conducted the work of the summit. Can you comment on the outcomes of the previous two summits that were held in Libya and in Egypt, and how this third edition differs from the other two, particularly related to the committee that they've set up to follow up on the uh, draft declaration that was adopted? As you know, the first summit was held in 1987. Uh, that's a very long time ago. And the second one was held in 2010. So as you can see, there was a very big gap between the first summit and the second summit. And naturally, uh, it means that between the first and the second summit, uh, hardly any of the uh, decisions which were made in the first summit were, were implemented. Then between the second and the third summit, uh, the second was held in Libya, and this is the third summit held here in the state of Kuwait. Uh, was held after three years, which is the period that the two sides have decided that the summits must be held every three years. Uh, now, at the second summit, a number of decisions were made in terms of the four areas of cooperation uh, between the two sides, in terms of peace and security, in terms of agriculture, in terms of development, in terms of uh, socio-economic relations. Uh, the decisions were taken. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the structures which were put into place uh, were never really operationalized. But more seriously, uh, the two regions were affected by a number of upheavals within our countries, as you, as you know. And so this tended to divert attention from the issues of development to the issues of maintaining peace and security in our two regions. So this third summit has been extremely important because uh, this is the summit where every effort was made to come up with uh, decisions to uh, develop uh, common programs and projects, uh, political will to have them implemented, you know, and the mechanism for implementing, as well as 
the mobilization of the financial resources uh, to implement the programs you know, which will be developed over the next three years. So this third summit has been extremely important uh, in the sense that uh, the two sides are now in a position to implement what they have decided to do uh, is uh, you know, reflected in the uh, Kuwait Declaration. There is no doubt that the African continent in, is rich in resources and in many other opportunities. However, it does face some challenges, particularly related to sustainable development and infrastructure. Can you comment on the assessment of the economic uh, development of Africa at the moment, particularly related to the developments that have happened over the past two years? And um, can you highlight in particular the Republic of Zimbabwe? Yes, we are satisfied with the outcome of the summit. As you know, uh, both uh, Africa and uh, the Arab region are endowed with resources. Africa uh, you know, has got uh, mineral deposits, a lot of agricultural land, uh, and uh, in the Arab region, they've got resources, they've got financial muscle, and uh, they have tremendous skills in water management. So if we can be able to marry uh, the resources of Africa and the skills of the Arab region, we should be able to come up with programs and projects which are mutually beneficial to the two regions. And so uh, this is uh, the most important outcome of this summit, uh, the realization of how the two regions can complement each other. By the way, the theme of this summit was partnership in development and investments. And this is, re this is really the key uh, in the interaction and the relationship between our two regions. The state of Kuwait has played a very instru uh, instrumental role in, in supporting the African countries uh, through the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development and other Kuwaiti-based charitable organizations. Uh, how do you evaluate the role that Kuwait plays in Africa? And how has it contributed to Zimbabwe in particular? Yes, in fact, it's part of the decision that uh, the two regions, the financial institutions in the two regions must come together in a coordinated way to put resources together to address precisely the issues that you have just enumerated relating to infrastructure, relating to uh, agriculture and food security, you know, relating to uh, the uh, development and beneficiation of uh, resources such as minerals, for example, mining and uh, the processing of mining products. These are areas that the two regions uh, must cooperate in and uh, definitely the two regions will benefit uh, from that process. Moving now to the bilateral relationship between the state of Kuwait and Zimbabwe. Can you comment on this relationship and the various aspects and domains that it covers? Yes, Zimbabwe has enjoyed extremely warm and close relationships with the state of Kuwait. In fact, the Kuwait Fund was one of the earliest funds which came to assist Zimbabwe in our development since our independence in 1980. As you know, we achieved our independence after a long and protracted war of independence. And so in 1980, at independence, we required a lot of developmental assistance. And the uh, state of Kuwait was one of the first to come forward through the Kuwait Fund. And we received considerable uh, assistance uh, over the years. Uh, but somewhere along the way, we've got into difficulties 
when we undertook our land reform program, which annoyed our former colonial masters, uh, the British and their Western allies, and they imposed economic sanctions upon Zimbabwe in the year 2000. So this created a situation where we encountered economic difficulties, mm -hmm. and this tended to interfere uh, with our uh, economic relations uh, with the Kuwait financial institutions. But I'm glad to say that uh, this is now uh, water under the bridge, is something behind us. We've been able to resuscitate our old you know, relationship and uh, should be able to undertake uh, new uh, and even bigger projects uh, together. On the political and diplomatic uh, front, we've also had uh, a warm relationship uh, with, uh, uh, with Kuwait. Kuwait uh, in the 90s uh, established a diplomatic mission uh, in Harare, and we have a diplomatic mission here, uh, a resident ambassador here, uh, and as you recall, that during the time that uh, Kuwait was invaded uh, by, by Iraq, Zimbabwe was one of the members in the Security Council. And we supported uh, the state Kuwait without any reservations whatsoever. In fact, during the period of the occupation and the war, Zimbabwe was president of the Security Council. And by sheer coincidence, I happened to be the ambassador at the time in New York, and I was chair of that uh, uh, of the Security Council during that crucial man month of February, uh, during the, uh, the, the the occupation and the war, uh, which led to the ejection of uh, of Iraq from Kuwait, uh, and of course. Uh, the role that we play together also held to bring us closer together mm -hmm. uh, as two very fraternal countries. <coughs> so we have enjoyed extremely good relations uh, between our two countries and we are looking forward to even greater things ahead. Now the main focus of your visit to the state of Kuwait is to attend uh, the activities of the Third Africa Arab Summit. But did you use this occasion to um, hold uh, meetings or, 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 or uh, sign agreements with your Kuwaiti counterparts or other senior officials in the Kuwaiti government or with other representatives uh, during the summit itself? Yes, we have met with a number of uh, financial institutions here uh, who have uh, expressed a lot of interest uh, in assisting us in developing a number uh, in a number of uh, areas, uh, you have mentioned health, education, yes, you know, agriculture, uh, infrastructure, uh, and so uh, we will be following up uh, all these contacts that we have established. Our Minister of Finance is here. Uh, he has also been very busy uh, meeting various uh, financial institutions here. So we are looking forward to a lot of uh, good work together. His Excellency the President has also received a number uh, of uh, uh, heads of financial institutions uh, here uh, in Kuwait and also in the Arab uh, region. So it has been a very, very productive uh, visit apart from attending the summit. Uh, uh, many meetings have been held on the sidelines uh, of this third summit of the Africa Arab uh, uh, finally, could we ask you what your opinion is of the initiative uh, by His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah during the inauguration of the summit to uh, provide a one billion U.S. dollars in low interest loans to uh, the African countries? Yes, this is extremely significant, and uh, all of us as a group of African countries are extremely uh, grateful and appreciative of this very, very important gesture. It is going to go a long way uh, towards uh, uh, in developing the various areas of our infrastructures, of our economy. And uh, we are even uh, encouraged 
because we also understand that uh, uh, Badia is also uh, setting aside considerable amount of money for uh, development projects uh, in the African continent. And indeed, uh, this is an important outcome of this summit, which all African countries appreciate and value and look forward to this mutual cooperation, which no doubt will improve the qualities of life of our peoples. Well, we'd like to thank you so much for uh, your time and for giving us this opportunity to speak to you. And on behalf of everybody at uh, the Ministry of Information English News Department, we uh, wish you a pleasant stay here in the state of Kuwait and also safe returns home to your country. Thank you very much indeed. We have been very well looked after. We very much appreciate the warmth and the hospitality that has been extended to all of us during our stay in your beautiful uh, country, in your beautiful city. We appreciate it very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that wraps up our exclusive and special interviews that we're holding on the sidelines of the Third Africa Arab Summit. Thank you.